How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I'm gonna to share with you the settings for my Tekken RX-8 Gen 3 system. With uh, RX-8 Gen 3 ESC, I use the Tekken 1900 KV motor. I power all of that with the Protec 6400 milliamp 4S shorty pack. And with the 4S shorty pack, it has like I said, 6,400 milliamps, so it has a ton of capacity, a lot of power. Depending on the length of the race and kind of the size of the track will kind of determine whether you want to always charge that to HV. Typically, because I have plenty of power and also plenty of runtime, a lot of times I'll just charge the battery just to standard uh, 4S, uh, not to HV. Because what I found when you charge to HV, yes, it gives you an increase in power, it gives you an increase in runtime, but a lot of times it's overkill. Um, I feel like if you don't charge to HV, it's a little bit more stable throughout the entire 10 minute run, where when you charge to HV, the power is slightly more in the beginning. And then I feel like once it kind of levels off, it stays really consistent, but that first minute or so can be um, a little more power than what you may, may desire at times. If you're running an electric truggy, it's 10 minute race, and you're a little bit concerned with the runtime, well then I, yes, I would definitely charge to HV. With the RX-8 system, um, I'm sure many of you have seen in my MBX-8R Eco, I use the traction drive clutch system, electric clutch system. Um, this also helps kind of just smooth out the delivery of the power. It makes it a little bit easier to transition from nitro and electric throughout the day and also in bumpy conditions, which a lot of times that's what we're racing eight scale in. Um, this just helps put the power to the ground. But you'll see when I start to go through some of my ESC settings that it's, it's all about controlling and having like smooth, manageable power. Um, out of the box, pretty much any of the brushless systems on the market are, are overkill for what we're doing. Um, so with running off-road, again, normally bumpy tracks, not super high bite, we wanna have settings that are providing us with really smooth, manageable power. So let's get to it. I'll go ahead and kind of run down, uh, basically screen by screen, um, each step within that screen, um, if you were to hook up your ESC to the hot wire system, um, that's how I kind of make adjustments. Um, you can do it through um, the speed controller itself, but if you have the hot wire, you can just make a lot um, like more precise or fine tune those settings for the Tekken RX-8 Gen 3. So, the first uh, setting will be the cell cutoff, and what that's gonna control is the voltage. Um, so basically, if you're out on a practice day and you're just running, um, you'll wanna make sure that you have that cell count set at 4S, because what's that, what that is gonna do is, once the voltage gets to where it's too low to operate properly, it'll just shut off. It'll, it's basically a safety feature. For me personally, I turn the cell count off because if I'm in a race, maybe I false charge the battery. I want to be able to run as long as possible. I'm not super concerned about, um, you know, hurting the battery or reducing the battery life. Um, what's important is trying to win the race and get the best result possible. But for most people or the average guy, batteries are expensive. So I would for the safety feature of it, always set that cell count to 4S. Next setting is the BEC voltage. Stock is six volts. I run that at 7.4 volts. And what that's gonna control is the servo speed and or the power that is being provided to the servo, which is gonna have an effect on the speed and torque of the servo. And also um, the voltage going to the fan which I don't use. So the reason why I run 7.4 volts is because in all of my nitro cars, the voltage is 7.4. 
So this gives the steering and the servo the same amount of power and gives it the same feeling as what it would on my nitro car. If you have a servo that just feels too fast, you can turn the speed down on the radio or you can just turn the voltage to six volts. Um, next would be motor direction, which is normal. Depending on your car and the orientation of your diffs, you may need to uh, switch that, but in the Mugen car, you run it normal. Motor type is brushless with forward only. For racing, you don't need reverse. You don't want to accidentally have, uh, you know, hit the trigger and, and have it go into reverse, so I have the reverse turned off. Next will be fan, which I always have the fan on. And what that's doing is just providing power to uh, where the fan is supposed to plug in. Even though I don't use a fan, I just always leave fan on. The final step for this first uh, page will be uh, data remote erase, which I have off. Um, so on to the next page, which is more relying on brakes. Uh, the first thing is drag brake. So I normally run between six and 8% drag brake. Right now I have my drag brake set at 8%. And most Nitro guys I don't think run drag brake um, because we're used to not having drag brake with our Nitro cars. But I feel if I don't have a small amount of drag brake, I sometimes feel like it almost has the feeling like in nitro as if the engine was running on because when you let off, it just continues to freewheel. Um, so like I said, I run between six and 8% drag brake. It's not very much, but it's just enough to where when I'm going off jumps, it has a more similar feel to uh, my nitro car. The brake minimum I have at zero. The brake strength, this is something that I feel a lot of guys just kind of leave the default and um, this can make, make your car really difficult to drive if you leave the brake strength at 100%. Um, it just makes the brakes really, really aggressive. And what I've seen with a lot of people is they'll run the brake strength really high, but then also run the brake frequency really high, trying to make the brakes, basically to smooth out the brakes because of the brake strength being really high. I do this a little bit different and it would be interesting to have you guys try this and see how it works and feels for you. So I run the brake strength lower, so 50% on the ESC and then usually on my radio after I set the ESC my brake EPA ends up being around 80%. Uh, push control is at zero, but here's the thing that I do to kind of counteract that lower brake strength. I run a lower brake frequency. So my brake frequency is at 2000, um, which again, this, this seems maybe a little strange to some, but I've always struggled a little bit with, I wanna have my brakes similar to mechanical brakes or the, the feeling of mechanical brakes. So what happens a lot of times with electric cars is, you have a lot of brake when the motor is going fast, but then when it's going really slow, you don't have much brake. So this is where I reduce the overall brake strength, but then the frequency is a bit more aggressive because it's lower. So 50% brake strength, 2000 for the brake frequency. And what that allows me to do is at the higher speed, the brakes are still smooth because the overall brake strength is very low, but I still have really good feeling and braking at low speed because the frequency is higher. So this, this works good, like especially if you're just trying to grid your car, sometimes it can be difficult to grid your car or if you have enough brake to where you can roll up to the grid, hit the brakes, then when you're on the track, you feel like you have too much brakes when you're moving faster but I feel it also makes it a lot more precise when you're racing with other cars. When you're going through tight corners or low speed corners, you still have the brake to be able to not drive through the person, um, but yet you still have the feeling uh, when it's high speed um, for the brakes to be smooth. So active drag brake I have on, 
RPM brake I have at two. And then now we will move on to the throttle profile. And first item on that will be the torque setting. So with Tekken, uh, basically that can go one through 10, uh, 10 being the most aggressive, one being the smoothest. Um, I have my torque setting at four. It depends on, just like with the brakes, if all these settings kind of work together. So with the torque setting, being at four, this just helps make the power delivery really smooth and manageable. Um, if you need more power, you can you can turn that up. But when you turn that up, you may also need to turn up the throttle frequency to smooth it smooth it out. But I currently have my torque setting at four. Typically, I'll run that between four and six. Throttle minimum and neutral width are both at one. So again, trying to get the initial um, like input that you're giving it from the trigger to be as smooth as possible. Um, reverse speed I reverse speed and reverse delay I just have at the default 34 and 0.8, but because I have it set in uh, brushless forward only, that doesn't matter. It's not doing anything. The throttle frequency is at 10,000, um, and that's just gonna help really make the power smooth. Um, if, if you want it to be a little bit more aggressive, you would lower that. If you want it to be even smoother yet, you could raise that. Uh, throttle profile is three, and then the final page is the timing profile, and I just have profile one, and then I have that set at five degrees, which is the minimum. So again, trying to have settings to where you have good manageable power, but that is smooth and drivable. Um, a lot of times it's really, really easy to overpower your stuff in electric, and um, with the Tekken RX-8 Gen 3, as you can see, there's so many settings that you can work on to smooth out and, and manage the power both on the throttle side and the brake side. And if you're more into bashing than racing, then you can bump these numbers up and, and have ridiculous power. Um, but for racing, a lot of times you wanna just make sure you have really smooth, manageable power uh, to get the best results.